and welcome again to Between the Sheets, the show where we go inside the papers because the main story is a little bit dull. Today, I'm joined by the broadcaster and columnist Dawn Neeson. Dawn, welcome back. Hello, good to be back. Here we are. Great British menu presenter Andy Oliver. It's a little story, little, little story. She says the British hospitality industry needs more diversity. That's right. The 57-year-old British chef said it's still a white male stronghold, but we are kicking down those doors. We are making a noise. Oh, my God. When are we going to see the end of this nonsense? I think she's completely right. I totally agree with her. Um, possibly not. I, 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 I've never watched her. I don't know who she is. I'm sure she's lovely. She looks gorgeous in the picture. She's Makita Oliver's but, mother. Oh, right. OK. And she used to present on T4 with Simon Amstel. I'm not a foodie. I've got no idea, Neither's really. It's, it's, it's a Pierce and Ping job with me at home. Um, but it's like everything now, everything, absolutely everything comes down to race. race. Absolutely. What, now, we here's are, the thing. You're white. Shouting. I'm white. And so we could be shut down on this. We could. Because apparently we can't have a view. It doesn't matter if you're... No, 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 this is the problem. ...an mm -hmm. immigrant, which I probably am by third generation, they came from wherever. That doesn't matter. We've, we've now come to a stage where we're judging people in their jobs based on the colour of their skin or their ethnic background. It's not even class anymore. It used to be, oh, it's the rich toffs are doing this, and that was our, no. that was our way in to have a yep. go. We can't do that anymore because we've got so many people from so many different backgrounds. And it doesn't mean, by the way, that we shouldn't be making an effort as a society to make sure that anybody, I don't care, young, old, anybody, if you're good enough, get there. Can we stop putting people into jobs because of the colour of their skin. Well, this is the problem. We are now, we're shouting at kitchens. We've shouted at everything this year, haven't we? Statues, flags, butter, milk, trees. We're shouting at kitchens now. And this is that the only people that should be in a kitchen now are non-white people. Which is, which is, but didn't but, uh, we get ourselves into trouble before? Because historically, they were the only people in the kitchens, and then that was wrong. Because... But that's wrong. That is wrong because that is 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 completely uh, that's obscene and offensive, and we can't talk about. It. You know what gets me with this, James? Is the fact is like you can only talk now about people of your own race, age. Class and that's because sexuality. Oh, unless of course you're having a go at posh people, because anybody can do that. It's open season. Uh, yeah, I mean we're getting that way though. We, but are, we are getting, getting that way. We are getting that we? way, and the thing is that you can have a go at somebody because because they're posh, because they're privileged or whatever, and you can say whatever you yep. like about them. But I think this is a problem that unless or until we are able to have proper conversations based where, if you criticise somebody or something, it's not because you you uh, you're criticising their skin colour. Because as far as I'm concerned. I grew up in London, which I think is a pretty multicultural, multiracial, very much so, very um, much so, uh, good, a uh, city. And uh, I, I'm not mainstream, if you like. I, I've I don't come from the upper classes. My historic ancestors came from Central and Eastern Europe. I'm you know North London Jewish, whatever you like. So uh, you know a whole load of differences, I suppose. But we all are. We are all, exactly. We're all mongrels, aren't we? I mean, we really are. Somewhere along the line, most people in this country have come from somewhere else. Speak for yourself. Uh, but. But thoroughbred. thoroughbred, obviously. Thoroughbred. Thoroughbred donkey. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the thing, though, that as, as soon as... Some, so people will automatically, they'll look at my hair colour, they'll look at what I do, they'll look at my age, they'll listen to my accent, and they'll make an assumption saying either, oh, it's obvious that you'd say that, or then say, oh, well, you can't have a view because you are. Yes. Well, this is the thing. But there, there, there is, there's also been mooted recently, hasn't it, that you, you can't even take part in a race debate unless you are of colour. White people shouldn't have any say in the race debate because it doesn't involve Well, them. that's because, of, because of the book, does. why I'm no longer listening to white people about race, because but, apparently we can't see it. But it's... But, it's like, but if you've grown up in London, if you've grown up in a school where, uh, as far as I was concerned, I was surrounded by pretty much every kind of person because it was a multicultural school. You just school. saw people. You just You'd saw see other people. kids. Exactly. But that's wrong now. I was brought up the same. It's like race... Being a racist back then meant... Seeing colour, picking on someone because they were a different colour to you. Do you think that all of this discussion has actually made it worse? 
Yes. I think we've I gone think back 20 we've years, if not further. Such a di- a so diverse, if now so full of hatred, so not even able to have a debate without hating, without shouting at one another. It's I ridiculous. I mean, we've been shouting and we're actually agreeing with we're each agreeing other. We're agreeing with each other. No, but it's, it's like, you know, I've got a friend I go to football with, West Ham fan like you, London, da 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 da. I've been, I've been mates for years since we grew up in East London together. And he actually looked at Dan and he goes, Oh my God, I'm black. Why do people need to keep going about the colour of my skin? It's never happened to him before. It's my age. It's like suddenly I have to be aware that I am black. And I said, no, you don't. You just be mate still. But this is, this, is, this is the very strange world in which we've entered into, which um, either we need more education or alternatively, we need to stop asking for more people of colour or representation in jobs. Rather than saying, when I want to do a job, I don't want to see any more job applications saying that we will look favourably on people because of a certain background. It's discrimination. It's dis- Because I don't want to see box ticking. I want to see the best person the best for the person job. The best person doing the job, yeah, absolutely. I mean, she does go on to say that when I was a kid, there wasn't anyone like me on the telly. There still aren't many middle-aged black women hosting massive shows on TV. No, but I mean, absolutely, I agree with that. But on the other hand, there are less and less working class white women like me now on TV. But you can't say that. No, I can't. I just did. Oh. I just did. Sorry. But the thing is, though, that this is not the only story related no. to this kind of oh, discussion. No. Honestly, it's really difficult now in any of the newspapers to find a story that doesn't relate to woke. When did this happen? Why did we become so blooming woke? I don't even well, understand. I Have what, you? What? No, not really, no. <laughs> um, but it's just like, it's this story, right? Okay, there's two, two on in one page, she says, ruffling through. Right, okay, these are the times. So, and this is, yeah, rugby chiefs scrap inappropriate Saxon's nickname in diversity drive. Now, are you... Now, probably... these are the people who were referred at one stage by Will Carling as old farts. Yes. Yeah. And they still are. And they still are. But now, it, it's obviously, everyone's offended by everything. Now, Saxons, I mean, you're probably much more clever than me. Most people are. But Saxons, weren't they sort of like a mid-Central European German, sort of like 4th, 5th century who came over here, did a bit of well, like... Exactly, and that's why I suppose... Uh, I mean, uh, does that mean that we're no longer refer- able to refer to us as ourselves as Anglo-Saxons? Well, it's, so so how, how is that offensive? It's something that happened in the 4th, 5th centuries. The Saxons came over here... And meanwhile, if you listen to the quote, we have chosen to revert to the traditional name of England A for this fixture whoa, against whoa, 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 whoa. Scotland A. Whoa, hold on. I'm sorry, you can't use the term England anymore. Oh. It's offensive, OK? Well, this is offensive. <laughs> exactly. I mean, so what, what if, 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 if Saxon is offensive, and I have no idea how that thought process has actually worked, um, England surely has to be offensive. Let's do away with England. Well, I think there are many people who are trying to. Well, yeah. Last month... Mostly in Scotland, last which month, you're allowed to say. Hugo Monnier, who is the former England wing, I hope I pronounced that correctly, uh, and chairman of the RFU's Diversity and Inclusion, uh, Inclusion Advisory Group, said... The RFU has made diversity and inclusion a core priority, with clear plans being worked on that should make a substantive difference to the game. Oh, just play bloody rugby and get on with it, for God's sakes. I mean, I wish, what is this? I wish they would, but you see, this is the other thing is, prompted by the Black Lives Matter movement. Oh. The Black Lives Matter movement is fundamentally a Marxist organisation that wants yeah. a redistribution no. of wealth based on the fact that they've now hijacked a very unpleasant active, uh, uh, activity, uh, uh, event, uh, a historic event that took place in the US in order to get their message across. Yeah, no. The sooner that we rip this up, the better. Well, they, and the thing is, you've got these, these it's very rich, very well-to-do sportsmen, footballers and rugby players who are taking the knee, supporting Black Lives Matter, and it, it, it's like, you know, you are so far from what this organisation is about. This organisation will completely change your life. You would not have your money, you would not have your car, you would not have your nice house. You would all be dirt poor. Meanwhile, the church, uh, same page, same page. I, I love this, it's great. At least it was still in one go, yeah. Paintings absolutely. and mosaics in churches with links to slavery could be altered. Uh, this is, or removed, or even destroyed, destroyed. as part of a review. Destroyed. into. Offensive 
memorials, new Church of England guidance has said. This is the organisation, by the way. Does this mean that they're going to get rid of all reference to uh, the Crusades? Yeah, absolutely. This is... Where that's how they got their money. It's so true. the Church of England, well done. You're a wealthy institution because you raided people. You, you raped, pillaged and stole. Increasingly out of touch with what the Church of England should be doing in this country for people that actually and never before at the moment that people needed their faith to rely on in this country. Meanwhile, the Church of England are concentrating on getting rid of offensive historical depictions of uh, religious stuff. I mean, how about dealing with uh, problems of today and now well, within quite, the church? quite. Relating I mean, to I mean, conduct or otherwise. Yeah, no, I mean, you've got kids getting stabbed all around London and most cities over here. They and their parents do not give a monkey's about whether there is an offensive mosaic in a church anywhere. Hey. Not relevant. I want to rip something up. So today's rip up article doesn't come from The Guardian, believe it or not. No. You found something worse? Yes, I have. Oh, my God. I know. It's, it's called Yasmin Alibi Brown. And Yasmin has... It is not called it. She is called Yasmin. Hello, Yasmin. Uh, it, as in the article. Right, OK, just clarifying that one. I love Yasmin. She loves you too. She speaks very highly of you. Always she does. <laughs> However, sometimes she writes nonsense. And today she's clearly had a busy day and she wasn't able to devote it to writing her column properly. So what she said here. In contrast, where she's talking, she's talking about voters and Englishness. In contrast, voters in non-urban constituencies in, in England were growly and unsettled throughout. Many were Brexiteers, she said. But that victory did not bring them peace. Hatred of the EU has been transferred to Britons of colour. No, no, how? I mean, I love Yasmin. But why? How, why? How, why? How, how, did she, how do you get that conclusion? Oh, I feel better now. Oh, good, excellent. I thought he was going to have a blooming art attack there. Except, except, there's more. There's more. We've got to go. There's, oh. You know how every so often in a paper and an article one gets reminded of how old one is? Uh, yeah, you're obviously a lot older than me there, James, obviously. <laughs> Under the banner headline of denim, logos and lasagna, what Gen Z deems chuggy now do you know what a gen z is i've got a vague grasp because i think my niece just about falls into this category is someone who was born mid 90s Perfect. to late 90s so that sort of like early 20s age group right yeah. so i <laughs> didn't i didn't know about this um tamara has been writing about this in today's Ooh. telegraph tamara abraham oh her am i chuggy that's the question many have been asking themselves have you yeah, oh yeah, on a daily basis. I thought, when I come in here this way, am I chuggy? That was my main concern. Mm. So, this is people who are slightly off trend. Oh. Their targets often seem to be millennials, the oldest of whom are now nearing 40. No. Oh my God. Millennials are nearly Sh 40. Shouldn't we actually just do away with anyone over 40? Because anybody over the age of 40 who hasn't had a midlife crisis and they say that they haven't, they're lying. Yeah, well, well mostly people over 40 are, 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 are sexist Brexiteers who probably be shot. Yeah, well, they're, they're the gammon. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the word pronounced chuggy or chuggy with a hard G was originally coined by Los Angeles software developer Gabby Rasson when she was a high school student back in 2013. Oh, she's probably made more money than God. Anyway, exactly. the things that are banned. So, you know the designer shoes, as in trainers, which are made to look rough? Right, yes. Or alternatively, uh, yes. they're made by a celebrity or otherwise, they're 300 quid or more, and they're things like a limited edition Kanye West Yeezys for Adidas, Nike's collaboration with Off-White, all of that stuff. That is chuggy. They sell for millions of pounds, by the way. Well, trainers. not anymore. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, the other things, tassel earrings. Uh, these flooded the high street a year, a few years ago, becoming such an inexpensive way to jazz up any outfit. Apparently they're chuggy. Right, OK. Uh, what is else? I know you're not wearing yours today, though. No, I'm not. No. I'm also not wearing a Be Yourself Babe t-shirt, thankfully. You are. You've just hidden it under I've a shirt. I've just hidden it under my shirt. Uh, in addition to that, I am not wearing a denim jacket. No. That's because you've taken it off and hung it over the back of your store. No, I don't like double denim. Double denim. Have you got denim on at the yes, bottom? Yes, I do. Oh, oh. yeah. And mm. the thing is, no, there's no excuse for double denim. Right. No, no, I don't like double denim. I can't even say it straight. Double denim either. But so, how, so, so what do they like? What is acceptable? Uh, 
Oh, I don't know. I well, don't I care. Well, I can tell you. Oh, I, I can tell you because in the, uh, um, what is this? This is the mirror again. Oh, my God. Oh, my lobby. God. Right. Under 30s are sick of screen time and Zooms. Getting you on that one. Oh, why are we going to wring our hands over how bad it's been it's for been, the it's oh, been, it's been, It is quite so depressing. Awful, though. It's so awful, so terrible. And because they are hooked for them. on old-fashioned hobbies. So gardening, painting, baking Ooh. bread, growing herbs, knitting, needlework, bird watching. So all the stuff that you and I think, pfft, boring, no. boring old farts. Oh, no. Yeah, oh, no. Oh, I love gardening. I'm all over it. Oh, OK. This weekend. So you're good in the bed, are you then? Oh, hey. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you can multitask. I mean, I wouldn't do the gardening and the other activities, but you can do one and then go oh, and do the other. Right, yes. okay. Anyway, so the gardening, yeah. let's focus on that. Family show. So the gardening, I've been planting strawberries. I've got lots of berries. And, and then, by the way, I like jam making. Yay. Well, and you actually then are I, very definitely... I am, I am an you, under 30. You are an under 30. Oh, you see, I, IQ, my obviously. generation, your generation is sick of it because you've ruined the planet. My generation... Ruined the planet? We are, planet? We are all over it because we, not, we grew up in the not, 1970s not. during Blue Peter. And right. learning how to do everything. Yes. So we're very practical. Well, I was a And then the next lot, all the Blair lot, rubbish. Terrible. They've ruined the planet. Yeah, no, no, Plastic no. everywhere. I, 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 Millennials, I, shocking. And now this lot, the under 30s, great. They're getting some proper things and they can cook but, and but, bake but, but, and grow things. But James, they are into making wine and brewing beer. So they're not all bad. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Now we, we're, we're with them on that one. Embroidery, though. I'm sorry. No, I'm embroidery, not, I'm no, with embroidery, embroidery now. I mean, sorry, yeah, oh. So. Talking of talking of wokery and who's horrendous, there must be a Prince Harry story somewhere. Oh, shall we have a look? Oh yes, all over the place. This is you know the world. Have you noticed how they're doing? One day of her, one day of him. Yeah. It's him today. This is it is him today, and this is the world's most shy publicity, uh, shy privacy guarding couple. Um, are talking again to Oprah Winfrey. Yay. Uh, yeah. I she, mean, this is the, I, I get. Can I just ask your opinion on this? Because they did on. their. Their big interview with Oprah Winfrey. Yeah, it wasn't and of course, an interview. It wasn't. It wasn't. It, it, was, it was a. It was a PR puff. Exactly. Uh, it, because he's already working with her. Yeah. On this show. Uh, on this show, it is. Yeah. It's a, um. It's called the Me You Can't See, and it's talking. Harry is talking um about his unresolved trauma. So basically, getting all that dirty washing about the family and how appalling they were. But was it that was that the trauma? Uh, you see, I think if he was talking about if, if it was the Diana trauma, fair enough. It's it is it is obviously, and you can't take that away from him. He lost his mum when he was young. But he'll it is be able the to whole, sell that for all his life. It is it's the like whole being trauma. on a reality show, being exactly. able to look. I was on The Apprentice, and I could sell that forever. Yeah. You know, my my activities with the wolf jacket, that that's my career forever. Are you traumatized, though, Jane? Yes. Would you like to talk to Oprah about it? Yes, I would. She could ask you some very probing questions. She could. And she could really. And move. could you give me ten million quid to do it? Yeah, well, quite. This is the other. And thing. that's the other thing. Yeah. It's like everybody's got a story, but not everybody is going to be paid the sort of money no. that he's being paid. But he needs it. Come on, he's only. He living, doesn't need he, it. It's only worth thirty million. He's only living in an eleven million pound California mansion. And this is the other thing. The day before, you had Megan doing uh, her. My mental health has suffered because I'm in a very, very Privileged yeah, your should. mental health might suffer a little bit more if you really faced up to your issues. And your issues are you, you and your husband, or you and your wife, however you want to look at it, you are trading off the fact that your name is prefaced by Prince. Uh, have you se you've seen Megan's book, have you? The book she's written called The Bench. Yes. Or it should be The Plank or The Hypocrite, if you prefer. But it's like by Megan, Duchess of Sussex. Exactly. Plugging a family she, she hates who are racist and drove her so far down the stressful anxiety road she considered taking her own life. But yeah, Duchess of Sussex, buy my book. It's, I just I, think honestly, it's tragic. Honestly, I, I can't it's... stand either of them. And this time she's talking about how women in particular have suffered in the pandemic, um, especially sort of like, you know, poorer women, while sitting, being interviewed, wearing 23 grand's worth of jewellery. Can I now ask you, though, because Harry has said, well, quite, yet the last year has shown us all that we are in this together. Oh. But you see, here we are. We may all be in the same storm. We are in different vessels. And here he is in his gilded, beautiful vessel. He's in the bloody royal yacht. I'm in a pedal boat. Oh, you should be, you should, you're in a pedal boat. And it's boat. sinking. I'm in one of those yurts. 
It's upside down. We are it's not, sinking. We are not in this together. We have no. never been in this together. That is absolute balderdash. It is rubbish. And I and I, what I find so sad is that he's taking the, himself and it so seriously. Oh, he's become. And oh, in the just... in the US, they love it. And I do understand that there are three hundred million people in the US, and they can make a very good career out of being the royal family and selling their story. Yeah. But as and when people realise that this is a crock of shite. And it's boring, and it's it's soppy, and it's uh, it, it's it's tragic. They will only be able to make the money that they need to make by selling the secrets of the family that That's they walked exactly away from. That's exactly what they are going to do. And you know what, James? I really wish that the Queen's speech today, or the, what this week, the Queen's speech had been actually genuinely written by the Queen. Because can you imagine what she'd have said? Rather than oh, reading, she would have had a few words. Rather than reading all that guff that Boris has come up with, she would have actually told it like it was. Now, and I you should... refer to our Prime Minister writing guff. You love Bozzer, don't you? Well, I don't necessarily love him, but I am pleased that he's Prime Minister and Sir Captain Hindsight No, isn't. absolutely. I mean, yeah, the, the one rule of being in opposition is you... So you want to have a little go at Boris, do well, you? I do. This is actually, Bring it on. It, this is Bring the... it on. Stand by your beds. This is the front page of the Sun, so it's not quite inside, but it is big inside as well. And obviously, it's all over the place. And this is the Sun's headline: Yes, yes, yes. Right. This is Boris Johnson's announcement that we are coming out of lockdown. Good. Uh, very slowly. Yes. Very, very, very slowly. Glacial. We don't need to do that. Um, are you a scientist? Uh, are you? Is no. he? No. No. Well, he's but not. he's being advised by the side. He's no, got he's it not. wrong. He's, be, he's being throughout advised. the pandemic. He's being and advised now, by the Brothers Grimm. Fi finally, I, I don't. I. I. I am not. Finally, gonna... he's getting it right. He's got the vaccination program right, which is pretty good. Come but on, which is admit it. Good. One pretty out of good. ten, not bad. No, it is good. For I'm the, what would you give the, the vaccination, vaccination program? Come on. What would I give the vaccination program? Out of ten, program? what would you give them for the vaccination program? PPE, we give them one out of ten. See me. Yeah, OK. But for oh, the, the vaccination, vaccination programme... Program, pretty much 10 out of 10 okay, at the moment. No, I, I'm not denying that isn't a and, good thing. And they're coming out of lockdown, frustrating as it may be. But isn't be, it amazing that Boris is successful with something to do, to do with pricks? Wow. He, get, he gets, he gets, he understands that concept very well. In any case, back to my point. Monday, stood up in front of the nation, very, very serious speech, and actually said... It's okay, you can hug someone and here's how to do it safely. And you can even stay overnight with your lover and have sex. Now, to be fair. If you need your Prime Minister to give you advice to be fair, on that. I don't, I, I don't think we need any advice from that sort of stuff from him, do we? Well, quite, exactly. I mean, I mean or, or Professor, you know, Having said that, we, we've all quite enjoyed that compared to, would you prefer to have that kind of being talked down to, or this kind of being talked down to, front page of, I didn't bring my gloves, I'm so sorry, Guardian. Oh, no, 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 uh, disinfectant, we must have some disinfectant somewhere. There must be. No. It's all right, I have, it's, look, I'll go and have a shower afterwards. Yep. Labour has patronised its heartland voters for too long. Patronises Angela Rayner. Yeah, I mean, exactly. You couldn't make uh, exactly. it up. I know. We've I been know. rude to people. We've been talking about working class, stay in their place. This is how you should feel. Go to your union meetings. Do this. Do that. Do the other. We're, we, you know, we're there for you. Rubbish. <laughs> I.e., we're not going to do anything for you. And by the way, we'll build a whole load of new schools, but we won't actually worry about what we teach you. No, 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 no. Because we're not going to teach you anything like you might actually need, like reading and writing and exactly. Maths. And we won't, we won't deal with any of the social issues because actually that keeps us in power. Yes. So we won't do any of that. No. And, and by the way, we'll crash the economy. They don't again get it, do they? No. They do not understand. They and do not understand where they have gone wrong. And you know what? They James, still, they don't. still don't get it. What and so I mean? think that's more serious in the sense that we can all take extract the Michael out of Boris and on many occasions, oh, come on. his Look, judgment has been shocking. It has okay? been shocking. But I'm also extracting the Michael out of the people that literally feel like they need Witty and Hancock and Boris Johnson micromanaging every step of their life. But you the know? thing is, though, that... The way that people have handled this is that they've been given the advice. And if you, I've been lucky enough to speak to people from around the world where either there are far more intrusive ways of managing populations than we've ever had. For example, in order to leave your house in uh, various parts of Europe, you have to send a text and receive a response. Yes, no, I get all that. I complete... And have your papers and do all this and fill in all these things. And there are curfews and all that. We haven't had any but of that. But I completely get all that. I get that more than this ludicrous amount of rules. For example, weddings, right? OK, as of Monday, you can have 30 people at a wedding. But 
the father of the bride still cannot walk his daughter down the aisle unless they're in the same bubble. You can't dance at reception. You can't sing at reception. Oh, to be honest, that's, that's going to be good for everybody. Have you ever been to a wedding where people have done a good first dance? No, actually, no. that's a fair point. Okay. That is a fair point, and we certainly didn't at our wedding. No, but well, no, I'm just and sick also the of other thing: stupid rules. There are there, there, there are stupid rules. Talking of stupid, it's no wonder that George Osborne left the standard. Look how it's little there is. Thin. I can tear this easily. Wafer There's thin. nothing in there. No. Anyway, let's go to the and finalists. Where and would you finally, like to start with your and finalists? I'm going to start and finally with Good Morning Britain, <gasps> who have I know. Love Susanna Reid, very, very brilliant. But in any case, they got rid of uh, Piers Morgan because he didn't trust a liar. And they've brought in Alistair Campbell for a week. I love Not that he ever lies, of course. No, 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 no. There no. were no weapons of mass destruction. No, 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 no. no. It was, he just slightly sexed things up a bit. That's different. Oh. That's different. Obviously, that's different. So The irony, I don't think, has been lost on everybody. No. I, I mean, even Piers, who's been watching it, has, uh, has pointed this out as well. But it's, of course he has. It's, it's, you know, I mean... Alistair Campbell's in there for a week because it's Mental Health Awareness Week. So and he was hoping to talk about mental wealth, health awareness as opposed to having to talk about how the party that he I, was so part of James has done so dreadfully. It's turned into a party political broadcast. I don't want morning TV to lecture me like that. Oh, but it's the thing scary. is, no, it convinces you as to why everybody voted the other way. Well, because you quite, just listen to that claptrap mm -hmm. and you realise that he hasn't got it either. No. No, he no, doesn't he understand. He still doesn't understand. And then he's sort of like, Susanna was brilliant. She goes, isn't it funny that, you know, they've given you a list of Ofcom rules straight away on day one. She goes, they've never given me that. And it's like, I wonder why, love. I wonder why. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, she's doing a sterling job. She's got the patience of a saint. But I mean. You know like, who else should be alongside her? Me? 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 I'd be very good. No, go on. Me? Actually, maybe you and I should take it over. Yeah. Can you imagine? Be, can you imagine that would be rather good, wouldn't it? No, good but, morning, Britain. Oh, yes. I can do it seriously. I can do serious presenting. Can you? No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, what? You, you can be, you can be, be Holly to my Phil. Uh, thank you very much indeed to Dawn Neeson. Of course you should buy the Daily Star. Wednesday in particular. Wednesdays, because that's when her column is published. And of course you can find me on Talk Radio every weekday morning between 5 and 6.30 with your early breakfast. Anyway, you have been watching Between the Sheets with me, James Max. Until next time, cheerio.